Hello and welcome to Pivik Pro YouTube video series. In this video, we'll talk about how Pivik Pro collects data on your website. So what will you learn? You'll learn how to start tracking data on your website, how data is being collected, how the process of data collection shapes data reporting. Knowing all that may help you ensure accurate tracking implementation, uh, troubleshoot any issues that may arise with data collection, and obviously help you make informed decisions about tracking setup. To log in into your account, you need to install Pivik Pro on your website. To do that, you need to go to the administration tab. So click on the menu, go to the administration tab. Then uh, I'm already on the uh, under administration tab. So uh, in your case, you need to go to sites and apps. And in here, you need to click on add a site or an app. Sometimes uh, site and app is also referred to as property. So in order to create a property, you need to provide its name and URL or URLs of that uh, of the websites that you want to cr uh, track. Once you do that, now I'm going to cancel because I already created one. Uh, so here goes the name, here goes the URLs that you want to track. Now those are, those are just test URLs. So you can ignore the domains and subdomains that are added here. And then you can go through some of the uh, data collection settings like time zone, currency, scroll depth. You can also uh, add some IP addresses that you would like to exclude from being tracked and perhaps add some crawlers. Uh, take a look at these settings. You can always go back to those and change them after the installation. Now, before you install Pivik Pro, I would recommend you to go to the privacy section uh, and decide whether you want to keep the consent form on or off. By default, it is on. Uh, now, in order to change the visual aspect of the consent form, you can go to Consent Manager, uh, but I'm not going to go through that in this video. What I want to focus on today is on the installation code, the container code. Now, again, I'm not going to go through all different methods of installation of Pivik Pro. However, I'd like to let you know that there's going to be another video where I'm going to be talking about the different installation methods. I will drop the link below this video. In here, what you see on the screen is the container that holds the tracking code and is used to handle most tags. You need to copy and paste this code right after the opening body tag on every page of your site or an app. Once you do that, the tracking will begin. Once you install Pivik Pro on your website, you can test if the tracking uh, is working uh, properly by going to the analytics, then settings, and under tracker debugger, if you see some interactions here, that means that uh, there's a good chance that the tracking is working uh, properly. Now, presuming that you do have some traffic on your website, uh, if not, you can always go to your website by yourself and check if your interactions are coming through in a tracker debugger. Now, presuming if you haven't excluded your own IP address from being tracked. Now, on the reports, after some time, uh, more, more or less uh, after 30 minutes from the installation, you'll be able to start uh, seeing some data coming through. So you'll be able to see the number of visitors, sessions. Uh, if you go to location or device and software reports, you'll be able to see some data here. Uh, things like channels, things like uh, pages report, internal search outlink, downloads. Uh, those are all an examples of interactions that should be tracked out of the box for most websites. Should you wish to start tracking additional interactions that are not being tracked out of the box, you can always go to Tag Manager and under Tags, you can begin adding new tags. You can add things like custom dimensions, custom events, goal conversions, e-commerce if your website is an e-commerce website. The key advantage of using our Tag Manager is that it works seamlessly with our Pivik Pro Consent Manager. In other words, you don't need to be tech savvy to make your website privacy compliant. Should your visitors 
not give you the consent for being tried. Okay, but let's take a closer look at the process of collecting data on your website. Here we can see the simplified visual representation of that process. I'm saying simplified because the entire process is way more complex. So bear in mind, we will be using some abstractions here. So from the perspective of a visitor, they come to our website and they may or may not see the consent form. That depends on whether you chose to use a consent form on your website or not. There are many different scenarios that could be played out, like anonymous tracking, no tracking, uh, but let's say visitor has given us a full consent, so we are tracking all the data. What happens then is that JavaScript tracking client is working in the background to collect data. At the same time, all additional tags are being fired by the tag manager. So all standard and enhanced interactions are being collected. In this context, we can think about JavaScript tracking client as a gateway for other tracking tags for when you add them via tag manager to track additional interactions. The role of JavaScript tracking client is to send data to the tracker. Those two are often mistakenly confused. JavaScript tracking client is a JavaScript object that is able to send requests from the browser to the tracker. Tracker, on the other hand, is a set of services able to receive, store, and process requests from JavaScript tracking client. And then requests processed by the tracker are passed farther for reporting services to what is commonly understood as analytics. But let's have a closer look what is happening when the visitor is browsing the website. Here we have a website where PIVIC Pro tracks data. If we go to DevTools of the browser and then go on to Network and here in the filter type in ppms.php, if we were to refresh the page, we will be able to filter HTTP requests that JavaScript tracking client collects via browser and then sends it to the tracker. So let's take a look at one of them. So if I were to click on this one, and click on this view, I can see that request. Even though it's quite uh, cryptic, uh, I can uh, unveil a lot of information from it. So let's have a closer look. From that very request, we can decipher a lot of interesting information, things like site or app ID in Pivic Pro. So that refers to the property uh, by which Pivic Pro tracks data on that very website. Things like page URL, cookie ID, visitors device screen resolution. Obviously, all this data is supplemented with the information retrieved from the browser, like user agent, which holds information about the browser and device of the visitor, IP address from which the request came from, and so IP address of the actual visitor uh, of the website. And then based on the IP address, we can figure out the visitor's geographic location. Uh, those and many more information are being sent in their rather raw form to the data collector. Now, the role of data collector is to collect the data as it comes, again, in their very raw form. This means we have to perform various actions to manipulate the collected data into more usable and desired form. And it is done in a predefined sequence of operations which take place in a data processor. The entire process in so-called tracker is done to perform activities like checking the correctness of the data, filtering out the unwanted traffic, uh, extracting interactions like site search, traffic information, goal conversion, custom dimensions, e-commerce interactions, but also things like visitor recognition, session detection, and so on. This entire process is done so the data is ready for the use of analytics engine. Analytics then does all different operations that are broken down into data extraction, transformation, and loading. So among those different operations, analytics engine is copying data, validates data, reformats data. It makes some aggregations and computations and data normalization. Then when we look in the UI of the analytics, when we look at the reports, for example, uh, a lot of the metrics that are being calculated on demand so, for example, bounce rate or go conversion rate, 
so-called dimension transformation, where, for example, session time dimension can be transformed into metric. Minimum session time, maximum session time, average session time, median session time, sum of session time, then things like totals in the report or percentages under values in the report. These are often calculated by the UI of the analytics module. And that's it. That's how Pivik Pro collects data. As you can see, the path from simple interactions that we track on a website to full fetch reports and dashboard that are then ready for analysis is rather long, but at the same time, very quick. That is thanks to the powerful computations that are taking place in the background. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to our channel. Check the description below to find some useful links like free Pivik Pro signup page, community forum page, and links to related videos. Until next time.